coffee mugs and books and magazines and everything else. So I've I've been using this time to gradually grow through my apartment and try and figure out um, what to do with myself. Uh, it's kind of been torturous. I've, I've, I've got a nice little uh, patio that I can see what's going on outside, but it's so beautiful here. And as Jensen knows, it's like 100 degrees with 100% humidity in Texas. So you don't want to go outside. But here I'm looking outside like, like if I could only. Uh, so I wish it was kind of, this is when I wish it was like October no, or November, December where it's rainy and gray. And I'm like, I ain't going outside. Um, so I, I've been sitting here uh, just cleaning up. What about you, Mr. Ackles? What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, just kind of straightening up. the. Pl I've been in this place for six years now, so uh, this particular apartment. Uh, so knowing that the end is, uh, is, is nigh, uh, I've, I've started to, uh, to go through. There's, it's amazing how much crap you can collect. Uh, in in just you know even and this really like to be fair we don't live live here this is really just kind of like a crash pad you know it's it's our it's our 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 home when we're working but for the most part it's not where we keep you know all of our all of our valuables and all of our you know our kids our memories um but still there's just a lot of crap yeah. so I, i've been kind of slowly going through everything uh and trying not to slowly go insane um more, more, been watching, not to go more insane more insane well here, here's 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 i found a, a tool to help to help with that kind of uh yeah. that lonely feeling there's a show called alone i'm serious man i know and i know you, you sit here you're watching these people like sleep on you know just sleep on like rocks and 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 tree shrubs and they're eating slugs and and they're trying to catch fish meanwhile i've like just had a pizza ordered and delivered and i'm like a beer and i'm like okay maybe being by myself in this place isn't so bad after all yeah but at uh, least you're outside yeah yeah no uh, yeah well, that's a good show uh tom and shepherd watching that that's funny <laughs> yeah. I heard that there's a Joe Rogan podcast with the winner, so I don't want to give it up. But I, I, I heard the Joe Rogan podcast with the winner a month or two ago or something like well, that. Well, there's like six seasons. There's like six oh, different. Okay. I guess the most recent season. I, I haven't Not seen it. any of it, admittedly. I've just heard about it via podcast. But yeah. I'm in Shepard apparently like, oh, and he got a moose. And then the bear stole it. And they're bugs. And they love, Tom and Shep love, like, chasing lizards and everything right. else that that – can happen outside um so yeah all right seems like we've both been spending our time well yeah yeah that's great yeah uh let's uh should we take some questions let's do it because we know what we know what we're doing but you don't have to. probably uh okay i'll ask i'll ask the first one this one is from uh stacy klobnak uh, listen we're gonna butcher some names so oh. i'm just i'm and by we i mean jared but just you know my own name Give uh, <laughs> paddle, 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 paddle. Jared P. Jared P. Jared P. Uh, over the past seasons, you have worked with great actors. Who would you like to work with again? Hmm. Uh, you want me to go first? Yeah, sure, go. All right. Um, you know, we've, we've obviously worked with a lot of actors that have been on the show several times, and that's they've also been part of this family, this virtual family right now, you know, since we're doing it from afar. Um, so the list goes on with uh, uh, with some of the people we've been around. Some of the some of the actors and actresses that I feel I've worked with that I would love to work with again, and hopefully get to work with again. And also, frankly, in Supernatural, we've been able to work with them again. You know, I think we've all died. We have people who died twelve years ago that are still back on the show now. Um, but uh, I. I know I, I, I'm going to say one name. It's the first name that came to my head uh, because I do get to work with him again. And that's uh, the, the esteemed gentleman and scholar, Mitch Pileggi. Um, so I, if this world kind of calms back down a little bit, then uh, he and I get to work together again back down in Austin, Texas. Um, so I'm excited about that. But I've also been excited about some of the actors and actresses who are kind of on their way up. You know, I, I um, when COVID started, I, I talked to Sterling, K Brown a few times just via text, just kind of shoot back and forth, like what's going on in y'all's world. 
Um, and so we, you know, we've been around for 15 years. And so some of the actors and actresses that we worked with way back in the day now have their own shows or in Sterling's case, their own show and a, a thousand Emmys. And, 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 yeah. And a mantle of awards <laughs> yeah. Get a house for his mantle of awards. Right. Um, but uh, th th that's always kind of fun because Jensen and I have had so many people uh, come on set and we've had some people who have done a ton of work and we kind of look at each other and we're like, all right, they're solid. And then we've had some people come on and it's their first show or their second show. And we look at each other after rehearsal, like, damn, like this girl or this guy can bring it. Um, and so the list goes on and on. Ackles? Yeah, I mean it's it's hard to pick one. Uh, yeah. There's a you know over the over the course of 15 years we've had a lot of really talented people come through the door, uh, and like Jared said, you know some have gone on to to have great success. I mean look at look at Jeffrey Dean Morgan, look at Sterling, yeah. look at uh, look at Catherine Newton, look at you know there's there's a a, a reason that these actors have uh, brought such great life to to Supernatural, and it's because they're just really really talented, and we were lucky to have them. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy that uh, other people notice that talent and that they are continuing to, to have success. Um, you know, I, again, hard to pick one. Uh, Chris Hardell, I, I think, is one yeah. of the one of the, my favorite. Uh, uh, that was one of my favorite arcs. Uh, who else? Uh, I mean, it was always fun working with Fred Lane. Um, you know, I. I don't know. There's so many. Uh, we always have a good time working with with the ladies, you know, with Kim and with Brianna and with Catherine, and and uh, so it's always fun having them around. Um, yeah, that's a that that's a hard a hard question to to pick one. Uh, I would say we've got a at least a dozen that I could think of right now. That's just please come back, and who knows? Maybe they will. Maybe they will. All right, I will do the next question. Okay. Uh, you did Stace Klobnak. I'm going to do Nancy LM921. First off, I really wonder what LM921 stands for. It's like the planet I come from is... I'm going to stop. Uh, <laughs> all right. Which castmate was the most surprising to meet or who was the most memorable first meeting? I mean, I... I feel like I got a pretty easy one here, so I'll start. Um, sometime around season four, episode one, I think it was July 9th, 2008, uh, I met uh, this little guest starlet. She's pretty cute, and she was in her underwear. And I think I remember saying to myself, I'm going to marry that girl. So it did. Uh, yeah, I think I was, I, I, I think when I met Jen, uh, my wife, um, so I don't know if surprising. It was certainly a memorable first meeting. Um, so uh, I, I guess I'm surprised in hindsight to have met her on the show at a weird time, you know, in season four. And, and she and I have talked about it. And she's like, it was really intimidating. Like I was coming in and there are these like two big old Texan dudes and everybody knew each other and y'all were all friends. And then I was like this little girl in her underwear, like, hi, nice to meet you. I'm here to play uh, the girl in her underwear in a hotel room. Um, but uh but here we are uh 12 years later jesus um and uh so i i think that was pretty uh poignant you know i just realized that every time dean catches sam with a girl she's wearing the same thing <laughs> it's in my contract <laughs> seriously because when in, in episode and jessica was in panties and a little tight shirt it's in my contract and then Jen, literally, panties and a little tight shirt. I have a type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently your type is women who hate wearing pants. <laughs> Isn't that all of our type? It's so uh, limiting. I just want to be free in my underwear. Hey, hey, I don't write it. I just acted. I, I, no, you just make requests, and that's fair. <laughs> and that's fair. Uh, I don't blame you. Um, so memorable characters, uh, uh, hmm, yes. I would say one that was, this is going to be weird. Uh, we've had a lot of, of very memorable characters come in and in, in out. Um, but uh, I'd say one that was kind of 
I, I was anticipating and not quite sure what to how it was going to go was when Paris Hilton came on the show. Oh yeah, and I remember because you know at that she was kind of at the height of her fame, whatever it was, uh, and had a very uh, you know established uh, reputation, let's say, and. So I think everybody had an idea of like who she was and what she was like, and as did I. So when she came on set, I was very shocked to see that that was not actually uh, her her persona, uh, that she was like a pro and she was cool uh, and she wasn't this kind of like bubbly, bumbling personality that she she put on for the masses, which uh, which that's when I was like, Smart. Yeah. Smart. Okay. All right. I, well, I see you. And by I the way, you. in the same vein, uh, Nicole, um, when she no came on, as the world knows as Snooki, you know, right. we had only, and I admittedly, I, I watched Jersey Shore, and I was like, man, Jim Tan Laundry, that's a good, that's a good motto to live life by. Um, and so you have this idea of who someone's going to be, and then she came on set, she had just had a kid. And yeah. we, were, we didn't know what to expect, right? Um, but it was like, okay, maybe she's going to come up and have a posse or whatever. And she came up like with her mom to help yep. her kid and her kid. And she knew yep. her lines, she hit her marks, and she was just super professional and kind. And I was like, oh, good on her. You know, like, um, that's tough to be, it's tough when the world, and this was pre, you know, social media getting so big that anything you say or do just gets lambasted and blown up. And so to to have her come on set and just be professional and kind and sweet um, was really cool. It's nice to be, it's nice, I feel like it's nice for me to be humbled and be proven wrong. You know, it's like, man, don't judge a book by its cover. Like I said, I, I, right. I preach it like I know it. And then I, I fall into that trap sometimes and I, I love being proven wrong. Yeah, yeah, all right, next. Uh... If you could give advice, oh, this is from, oh, wait, is that? Lauren2926? No, Nancy LM921. Didn't you That's what that? I, oh, oh, weird. I oh, read. Is this a two-parter? Two no, I read Nancy LM921, but then my eyes went to Lauren2926. So uh, I'll read Nancy LM921 here. Question that, for J2. If, so that, that prior question was Lauren2926. Right. Um, now we're doing Nancy's question, though. Okay. Sorry, okay. first time, guys. I didn't get a rehearsal. I'm so nervous. <laughs> uh, if you could give advice to your younger selves beginning uh, acting, what would it be? Wow. Um, don't quarantine. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and start it out. Um, I guess I've had... I guess I've had some time to think about this, um, to go off on a little bit of a tangent. Uh, these last four and a half months, and Ackles and I talked about it, um, traveling up here in over the last couple of days, it's been, we got into such a routine with Supernatural. You know, there, there was the longest we ever went without filming was either the, uh, not the quarantine, was either the writer's strike back in 07, 08, or between seasons, but it was like two months, two or less than three months is the longest that we've ever gone without playing Sam and Dean Winchester. And so you have a lot of time to reflect. And also you're at home because there's a pandemic and so you're not going out. So you're kind of stuck in your head with your thoughts. Um, and think about what does it all mean? You know, I've been in this business for 20 years and Ackles has been in this business for like 52 years, I think it was. 56. I think, yeah, 56 years. I always, I miss, I mix up twos and sixes. Right. My bad. Um, but you have time to kind of think about what, what it means. And I mean, my first thought was, wow, one pandemic and uh, there's no more need for a, a, a talking monkey. Um, I was like, I'm, my, my world is useless. My, my, <laughs> my vocation has no meaning. Uh, um, so I was acting to myself um, at my home in Austin. It was pretty embarrassing. Uh, beyond that, um, I guess I, I would, I guess I realized, you know, you get caught up to some degree. And he and I both live in Texas and we film in Vancouver, British Columbia. And so we've had wonderful opportunities to travel, to, to embody new characters and to explore new ideas and new thematics and 
um, new stories and it's really intoxicating. It's so fun. I, it's so fun. And it comes with, it comes with very obvious perks. You know, we, we can pay our bills and, you know, we can, uh, um, buy a nice dinner if we want. Um, but I guess I realized when we were quarantined for four and a half months, just how much I missed the work. Like I really do love stories. I love hearing stories. I love when someone's a, a savvy raconteur and can hold court with a group of people they never met telling anecdotes or stories or jokes or whatever. I'm an absolute audience member. Like I love being there and like, Oh, they're going to tell another story. I, I love those friends um, that I have. Uh, but I guess I realized that the through line for me in acting was I loved acting long before I ever got paid to act. Um, and if I didn't, I think the lows, because there are a lot of, there are a lot of downsides to this business, as wonderful as it is, but the lows of being away from family, being away from friends, being in an apartment for two weeks, um, to, you know, away from your kids that you've just been with for four months or your, your wife or your husband or whatever, um, your home, uh, the downs are pretty real. And so if you don't have a really true, deep underlying love of the work of what you're doing, um, then I don't think it'll last. And so, so make sure if you choose to go forward with acting, make sure there's nothing else you can do. You know, if it's like, well, I'd like to act, but I do love teaching. I like to act, but I do love engineering. I'd like to act, but I do love science or I love making coffee or whatever. Um, then acting's a, a difficult route. But if you wake up and you go like, man, I, 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 I strive and desire to go tell a story, to go embody a character, to go explore another mindset through somebody else's writing that has a whole different set of experiences and, and, and uh, knowledge, um, then I think it might be for you. Apples. Um, I would say advice wise, and this was kind of, this was some advice that I, I, I did get early on, uh, which I was grateful for. And I, I guess I would, I would give a very similar piece of advice in that, um, when, when starting out with acting, uh, you, you have to first you have to get in the room, uh, and you have to audition for people, um, and they're going to be sometimes brutally honest. So you have to you have to develop a thick skin very quickly. Um, but I would say that the biggest thing that helped me was um, if uh, if if acting was like fishing. Um, you don't want to just drop one line in, in the water. You want to cast a wide net. Uh, it's a game of numbers. The more that you, the more you audition, the more you learn, and the, the more you uh, have an opportunity of of, of hitting. So, um, you know, I there were roles that I really, really wanted, and that I really thought I was going to get, and I didn't get, and I was very discouraged of that. Um, so I quickly learned that when I go in for that audition or I go in for that meeting or I go in for that, that callback, just treat that as my last performance. Boom, walk out the door, what's next? They call you back, hey, it's an encore. Uh, if you get the job, fantastic. Now you, got, now you got something to focus on. But you just, you keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Uh, you know, who, somebody said, uh, you know, you get knocked down seven times, you get up eight. All right, uh, SPN Sweet. Hi, J2. I think that's a Brazilian flag. Uh, amazing. I hope there are some uh, Brazilians out there. Um, my question is, if you could change anything about your characters, what would it be? Love you. Love you back. Um, I'll start. Uh, if I could change anything about my character. Uh, well, I think if you if I could change anything about my character? Uh, well, I think if you had asked me this question,
finals of playing tennis, but we didn't know if the person across the net from us was going to hit a forehand or a backhand, if they were going to lob it or if they were going to jam it down. Um, and so you just kind of learn who you are, learn the fundamentals, and you go with the flow. And so I feel like I have a good sense of who Sam was and who Sam has been and who he's becoming. Um, and I'm really excited to do our last 16 days of filming. And, um, and I, can, I can hear a groan. Even though uh, even though no one's here, I can hear people going like ah. Uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's my mind going ah. Uh, um, but I feel like uh, I feel like I'm ready to go with the flow. Uh, something I changed about the character. Uh, probably his diet. <laughs> uh, because at this point, Dean is more likely to die from heart disease than a vampire. So uh, fair enough. Yeah, there we go. True story. Uh, all right. Uh, Hunter Life SPN. Hello, my name is Vittoria. Vittoria. Did you imagine at the beginning of the series that it would have this proportion that is today with 15 seasons? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at, at all. That's why everybody we meet in the industry is like, God, I can't believe that show is still going. And we're so, like, it's still going. Or, or that show's still on? Um, yeah, I, I, obviously nobody, uh, could have predicted that this, this show would have lasted this long. Uh, I think early, early predictions were that the show, uh, could, could really go for a successful run of like three to five seasons. Uh, and that is a very successful run yeah. of any show. Yeah. Um, so the fact that, that we went three times that, um, is, uh, yeah, that's that's it's unheard of, and it certainly was not predicted uh, by any means. But I think that uh, because of the world that uh, that Eric had had created, um, it just lent itself to uh, to a continuous exploration of it. And luckily, we we had some um, very brilliant people manning the helm of of taking the story uh, on to to new to new levels and. Um, to, to greater lengths and and so it's been uh it's been quite a ride we we certainly don't ever know where we're going but we you know they like they say life is is about the journey not the destination and we have certainly been on a long and beautiful journey for 15 years that we never never expected so yeah uh, i agree with Agles. um yeah we were hoping to to get a a a back nine pickup, which in TV speak is, you know, when you do your pilot, you get picked up, you usually get 13 episode order. So you get basically the first half of season one plus a few episodes. And we were like, man, I think, I think we got something. Like, I think we might go a full season. Remember we had a guy who worked on the show um, the first couple of years and he would always be like, yeah, y'all going 10 years, y'all going 10 years, buy a house. And it was like, he was one of these folksy guys, kind of old school, the Teamster. And every time we'd be like, ah, yeah. He's like, mark my words, you're going 10 years. And we were like, well, I hope so. But, you know, like, don't cash the check. Um, and it turns out he was wrong, but not wrong in the way that. Yeah, little did he know. Yeah, 15, we were, pal. We were right about him being wrong. That's right. <laughs> so we were the fools, I suppose. Um, no, it's been, it's been. And frankly, and this is obviously on camera, so maybe I shouldn't say this. I feel like the show could go 15 more, honestly. Like, I feel like we have so much that we could do, so many stories we could tell. Um, but I feel like we're going to deliver uh, episode 327 and all the ones before it uh, with some gusto and with 100% dedication. And... Um, and then we'll see from there. But this certainly went further than I would have ever dreamt. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, Dragon Embers. What prop do you want to take from the set when it's over? Jensen? Uh, prop. Prop. Yeah, prop. Um, prop wheels. What's that? Not wheels. Props don't have wheels. Props don't have wheels. Uh, you know what I'd really, I'd really like, but I, I, I they're not gonna, they're not gonna part with that um, for 
a lot of reasons, but uh, the cult. Oh. I think that would be super cool because it was it was uh, built for the show, and it just as you know, it's so it's. Uh, I think it was such an piece, uh, an important piece of of uh, of the show, and it's just cool, and it also uh, it also still has some of my blood on it from when from, <laughs> from when I had the uh, the showdown in Frontierland. No shit. When I had to do this, the boom. Oh yeah, 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 flag it. Yeah, I, that uh, that that hammer was so uh, hard to yeah. to pull back that it just literally ripped my palm open. Um, so I think that I I think I should just own it for that sake. That I've got I bled I bled on it. Well, uh, I don't know. There's what. If Elon Musk uh, keeps going the way he's going, then we will be able to clone you based on the cult. So maybe that should go to like a museum, Smithsonian. Perfect. All right. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. of Ackles. Ackles is? Ackley? Ackley. Pluralize your name. Ackley. Yeah. Ackley everywhere. What? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, I mean, I, I, could, I could think of a ton, but that's, that's certainly one that I, I, I would like that I probably won't get. What about you? Uh, so many. And um, there may have been a few little bits here and there that nobody would ever miss or even know they were part of the show that, that have gotten misplaced. Yeah. They got, they get lost, you know, things move and, uh, between seasons that mean a lot to me though. If somebody walked in my house, they wouldn't know anything about it. Uh, but if I were to take one of the kind of, uh, integral props from the show, I got to go with the demon knife. I got to go with the demon knife for, for several reasons. Um, demon blades. Good choice. Demon Blade's a good choice, and um, you know, I, I think when the conversation happens with Tom and Shep and Odette about like why did Uncle Jensen kill Mom, I can be like, well, I'm not sure, but here's here's the weapon, here's uh, from the crime scene itself. Right. And so um, when I do something, when I make some mistake, which I do often, and Jen gets mad at me, I can just hold it as self defense and be like, this has killed you once before. Don't make me call Jensen. Um, so, uh, I think the demon knife would be, uh, the demon blade would be, uh, pretty awesome. And I don't know if everybody knows this out there, but when it was created, you know, they, they created the, the hilt of the blade that you hold and then the blade itself, but it was put on inverted. So actually when you hold the knife, you're, you're holding it upside down, you're holding it upside down. But since it made it to camera that way, uh, it had to stay that way for the entire run of the show. So it's kind of a neat little, you know, I, I love the little asterisks um, or the little, I think it's the mistakes that make something perfect. Um, and so I think it's a neat little happy accident, happy accident. Yeah. Uh, all right. Emma Shane, I'm currently in high school right now and you started the show the year I was born. Do you think you were? You were more of a Sam or Dean in school. I mean, I was certainly more of a Sam. Um, yeah, I was probably I was probably a healthy blend of the two. Uh, you know, Dean. I, I feel like Dean would have gotten a little bit. He would have been more uh, resistant of of authority and uh, and and rule following. Uh, I, I I try to keep it in the in the in the you know keep it in between the lines. Um, for the most part, I, I probably had and hung around with a group of friends that uh, that uh, liked to to toe the line a little bit more than than I. So I was tempted to do things that probably you know uh, Sam wouldn't do. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say as far as like as far as the mischievous the mischievous mischievous aspect of it, I, I was probably uh, a, a happy blend of both. Yeah, I was uh, I, I I was Sam through and through. I was yeah. I was uh, I loved academics. I loved school. Uh, I was a math guy, and um, still am. Still love doing weird math puzzles and riddles and whatnot. So, um, and I don't think I was anywhere near as brave as Dean is. You know, um, I wasn't as tough as Sam, but. Uh, I certainly, uh, I, I still do love school. One of these days, I'd, li I'd like to go take some more. Um, but um, 
Emma, uh, kick ass, senior year might be a little strange. Uh, our hearts and thoughts go out to you and all the other seniors out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I think I, I think I'd go with Sam. Okay, Luisa Fernandez, Luisa underscore Fernandez. Uh, hey boys, hey, which is your favorite line of the show and why? Brazil loves you. Love Brazil. Favorite line of the show. Whew, there's been so many. Uh, do you have one offhand? I mean, I lost my shoe. Makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, That's so stupid. <laughs> and I remember filming it, by the way. I remember vividly filming that scene in that alley where I was like, uh, and they had to go, they had to go clean. So there's a bit of a, I don't know how to say this, other than there's a bit of drug use in Vancouver. And so they send people the day before to clean it and like bleach the entire alley and get rid of needles and other kind of drug paraphernalia. And then they send somebody the day of as well. And so they're like, well, don't, don't, uh, don't wear your shoes into your trailer after you go from set, like take your shoes off before you go into your trailer. So you're not tracking whatever there is there. Don't grab anything off the ground. You know, don't touch your face. This is pre pandemic. Don't touch your face. Um, and I remember I had to keep on and I remember the shoe had a little metal. So the bottom of those Puma shoes, they had soldered or put in a little metal bit and then created the grate in such a way where as I'm getting the gum off the bottom of my shoe, I had to, Jared had to catch the little metal hook onto the, the, the broken grate that was a prop to get my shoe off. And I remember I had a tough time with it at first. It was kind of a weird part of the shoe and the arch or something. Um, but I remember filming it vividly. Um, I lost my shoe. Um, what kind of low sodium freaks don't have salt? Uh, I do love me some salt. So, uh, that stuck out there. There have been so many, um, yeah, those family don't end in blood, family don't end in blood. uh, driver picks music. Shotgun. Um, um, yep. I, you know what, what I, I'm trying to think of like some really like emotional ones and I, I really do like, uh, the, um, I mean, it was, I guess it was kind of, Dean's death scene after he got the the crap beat out of him by Metatron, but when he's he, when Dean says, "I'm proud of us," dude, I was gonna say that exact. I'm not a word of a lie. Yeah, because I, I I feel like that that line is uh, is something that could be used almost every season from one brother to another brother. You know, just like looking at what they've done, looking at what they've accomplished, or looking at what they've survived. And they can both they could both easily very you know look at each other and just be like I'm proud of us. I think that's I think that's a big uh, underline um, quote of of the show. I agree totally, yeah. and I think it's also even more so. I feel like it's something that's mm -hmm. going to strive to be able to say, which is one of the reasons they work so hard, so diligently. They sacrifice so much. Um, they want to be able to say I'm proud of us. <clears throat> so that honesty, I'm choking up. Um, the honesty and the vulnerability of admitting like, Hey, if this is it, man, I'm proud of us. Yeah. Um, is pretty deep. And I swear in my life, um, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Honestly. It's good. It's a good one. Uh, all right. Moving on to, uh, Ana Cristina, Ana Cristina Fagunde. 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 I'm probably butchering that. Oh, tu brute. Uh, what do you miss most from the first season? Oh, first uh, seasons, uh, oh, first seasons. Yeah, first couple seasons. What do you miss most from the first seasons? You no, know, I miss. You, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I could certainly uh, take a stab. It, it's. I, I would say that that in the first couple of seasons, um, the. It, it was uh, it was simpler times. Um, the structure of the show and the the world that the that the uh, that the boys found themselves in, and the motivation behind what they were doing was uh, was simpler. Um, you know, they they were hunters of things that go bump in the dark. 
and their father has gone missing and they've got to find their dad. And I think that's such a, it's such a, a, a simple concept um, with, with such a giant road in front of them that I miss that kind of like setting out on, on a very clear cut objective and journey uh, and not knowing exactly what, what lays in store, but having that kind of clear motivation, I think is, uh, is something that we continue to have throughout the years, but I think it just, as the world expanded, it became more complicated and as characters came on and, and ex, you know, it expanded then to like heaven and hell and there were demons and the angels and then it was God. And like, so it, it got really, really big and very, a, a very complicated world that these guys then had to, you know, navigate. Um, I think in the beginning it was just simpler and I, I, uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I, uh, funny. I enjoyed that as well. I'm going to kind of go on the same coin, but maybe the flip side of the coin. Um, what I loved or what I remember, you know, the halcyon days of the first couple seasons, I, uh, it almost felt in hindsight, at least it felt like falling in love. It's like, there's something here. There's something here. There's some sort of magic. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's going to look like, but there's something here. It almost felt like the honeymoon phase or something. It was like, we were trying this. We were trying that. No, well, this just got awkward. Uh, uh, am I blushing? I'm lonely. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, no one's here. It's just me and my dog. Um, <gasps> we knew it. We knew it. <laughs> Send pictures and videos. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I miss the, uh, I miss that feeling where you know something is going to be special. You know something's going to be big. You don't know yet what form that special and big is going to take. And it's kind of, we talked about this in other instances and in other mediums kind of, of just keep on working until you figure out what you're working for, you know, with always keep fighting. It's like, keep on fighting. Even if you don't know what you're fighting for, just keep fighting. It, it'll, it'll materialize, you know, you'll, you'll have something tangible. Um, and with those first couple seasons of the show, we all knew there was a buzz. There was a feeling it was visceral, but you could, it was almost like a connection we felt to our crew, to the city, to the characters, to the story. And it was like, there's something, man, this could be something. Um, and so as that foundation built of just excitement and the willingness to sacrifice and work hard, um, and that passion, uh, watching it materialize and being a part of it materializing and with y'all, you know, I mean, we started doing conventions season two or three. Uh, but like, this is, this is something, man, like this is, this is something, this could be something that's really fun for a couple of years, not knowing that, you know, it's going to be a part of our lives for the rest of our lives till we breathe our last. Um, so I, I, there was a really neat little, like, I don't know, startup. Um, thank you, Anna, Anna Christina Fagunde. How'd you say it? Fagunde. 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 Uh, Crystal Christenberg. The brothers have been to uh, a, it's Kristen Bear. Kristen Bear. I don't know if that's French. I don't, I don't know. know what that accent was. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Crystal. Yeah. Kristen Bear. Uh, no. Lo siento. Uh, Crystal Kristen Bear. Um, the brothers have been to a few famously haunted locations. Is there one you guys would have loved to have the brothers or the, one that you guys would love to have the brothers investigate? Uh, Yes. Yeah. Amityville. Oh. We've never I, been there, right? I never have, no. No, but I mean, the Winchesters have never, we, we never. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also. The dog walkers here. Well, second. that's okay, because I, um, I would love for the brothers to go to the Winchester Mystery House. Um. I went with Jen and Tom when he was uh, maybe a year or too old. He was a little thing and got a tour and uh, just the idea that it's part of, I also, I've never been to Lawrence, Kansas. So Jared wants to go to Lawrence uh, and Jared will go to Lawrence and Jared will stop speaking in the third person right now. 
Uh, I would love for the brothers to go to the Winchester Mystery House. Um, that would be too cool. Um, I don't know how to say it, but spin off. <laughs> what would we call it? What would we call hey, a spin off? This is like another episode. Uh, another episode? Special features? Special features? Uh, Warner Home Video. Get yeah. on it. Warner Home, Netflix. Yeah. Um, my phone's on. It's on vibrate right now, so I don't interrupt. But All right. Hi, uh, Lily. Uh, Luana Lolo. Right? Luana Lolo? Say that three times real fast. I can't. I can't even say it once. Nailed it. Uh, if you could have a conversation with Sam and Dean, what would you say to them? Brazil loves you guys. Uh, well. Don't leave the bunker. <laughs> Don't leave the bunker. Yeah. Stay there. It's cool. Like, Take, a Take a vacation. Take a vacation. Take a vacation. There's other hunters out there. Yeah, we're trying to quit trying to carry the load. Like, like, just you know, take it easy for a second. You don't have to always go, 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 go. Stop. On, you know, you have an angel friend. Make him do it. Yeah, sit back, smell the motor oil. I mean, smell, <laughs> smell the nuclear bunker. Yeah, I mean, they're friends with a with a nephilim and a and an angel. Like, put them to work. Yeah, they're relaxing. Sit on the beach. Come on, guys. Have a beer. Get some sun. Have yourself a, a drink with too much fruit in it, you know? <laughs> do yourself a favor. Put some bacon in that drink. Uh, yeah. I, I, Wait, did we ever do an episode? Uh, I know we did that one where we went to, like, that, like, health spa thing. But did yeah. we ever – was there ever, like, a moment where, like, the guys had to do, like, spa stuff? I don't think so. Just the health spa episode with the fat sucker. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Where we all met Donna Hanscom, Brianna. Um, I know we had an episode right when the, whenever, whatever year the ice bucket challenge was going on, we had a scene, I think it was the first episode, where Sam and Dean are sitting on like uh, folding chairs mm -hmm. looking over that lake on the way to Whistler, Squamish. Um, and the little green, uh, oh God, the green uh, cooler. That yeah. Oh, that's a good prop. Yeah. Uh, but the green cooler between the two boys, because I think yeah. we turned it into the ice bucket challenge afterwards. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, I think, the most relaxation we've seen Sam and Dean in 327 episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Have, yeah, that's that's what I would say to Sam and Dean. Yeah. Have more moments like that. Yeah. Oh, here's a, here's a good thing. Speaking of, I mean, we have the we have the Amityville extra episode special features. We have the Winchester Mystery House extra episode special features. If y'all are willing to watch an hour, it'd be an hour because, you know, it might be streaming or something. But if Sam and Dean Winchester getting a massage, I think it'd be a great episode. <laughs> I'm just saying, write your, uh, write your local congressman or woman. Uh, send copious start, amounts. Start, of start a petition. Start a petition. Yep. Uh, we'll sign it. It's just literally an hour long of Sam and Dean. Sam and Dean, not Jared and Jensen. It's not about us. It's about Sam and Dean getting a massage. <laughs> um, you write it, I'll act it. I mean, there's listen, there's, there's some comedy in there, you know. They bring out the hot rocks. Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the octopus suction things. Oh, the, 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 yeah, what do they call those? The cups or whatever? Cupping, yeah. Cupping, yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see Dean really enjoying that. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, your turn. Uh, Jowdy. J O U D Y. Jody? Jody. 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 Judy. Uh, Jody. Jody. Uh, what was the hardest skill you had to learn for the show? Love from Syria. Hi. Sweet. Hi, Syria. Love you. Love you Big back. Wow. Hi, Syria. Uh, the hardest skill we had to learn for the show. This is going to sound weird. Um, uh, fight scenes. Because of this, because when you fight or hit something, you're fighting or hitting something. Whereas for fight scenes, you have to train yourself to like punch three inches away from something or look like you're tackling somebody, but then pull at the last second. It's almost like trying to 
look like you're throwing the football as hard as you can, but make it go three feet. It's like, okay, well, I, don't I just throw it as hard as I can? They're like, no, the camera's not going to, if you punch too fast, the camera's not going to, so really, you know, you're not supposed to punch like this. And then you're supposed to just go straight to it. So it, it took some, it takes some, some focus to go like, okay, remember, you want to look like you're punching a bad guy, but you want to not punch the bad guy. So it's this really weird juxtaposition of like, sorry, my dog wants to get petted. He sees me fighting the air. I feel like, uh, you know, when we first, uh, when we first started the show, Jared and I had like, I don't know, we did like six weeks of like rigorous boxing training just to kind of get ourselves in shape. And like, you know, they wanted to make sure we knew how to throw a punch, which I don't know why they think we didn't. Uh, but, but we we did. And it's, you know, when you're when you're actually boxing training, you're hitting something. You're oh, hitting, head back. You're hitting focus mitts. You're hitting uh, each other when we got in the ring with some headgear on. Um Cut to uh, like a couple of episodes in, and Jared and I actually get into a bar fight in in Vancouver. That's well documented. It was not our fault, um, but we were able to protect ourselves, let's say, uh, very well, yeah. and uh, against uh, uh, and with being way outnumbered. But we still, because we just come off all this intense training, and you know, we we I think grown up in a life of athletics, so we were able to to to, to handle ourselves. Yeah. Now, after 15 years of stunt training, if somebody were to jump Jared and I at a bar, we would not land one punch. It would, we would, we'd it be would like, look good, though. It would look good on camera. But it would look so good if somebody was filming it. The only problem is, is the people that we were fighting would be like, yeah, what are they doing? Why are you swinging and, and missing me by a half a foot? So like, This guy has bad vision. I'm going to leave him alone. So to all you out, uh, so people out there, if you see us, please don't pick a fight with us because it's going to be embarrassing for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the hardest skill I think I had to learn was uh, the knife throwing was was difficult, but that was fun. I actually enjoyed that. Oh, I know. Uh, Phil Segrecia wanted me to do this thing in in I forget what episode it was, but where it was a motel room scene and, and Dean is sitting there uh, cleaning all the weapons, cleaning the, the, the guns. And I had, uh, I had Dean's 45, his, uh, his side-by-side -side shotgun, uh, and I think it was your nine as well, your Beretta, uh, Sam's Beretta. And he wanted me to have them, to take them all apart, clean them, and then put them all back together again without looking at them while saying the dialogue. And that was that proved to be difficult. It's it 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 like, hey, I have a great idea for the scene tomorrow morning. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Could you practice this for yeah. like the next twenty minutes, and yeah. then we can put it on camera? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it's a toss-up between learning to do all of that uh, it, together without looking, you know, taking it apart, cleaning it, putting it back together without looking and saying dialogue, that or tap dancing. Yeah, you and DJ. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that looked pretty intense. That was intense is one word for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. Thanks, Jody. All right. Uh, Joao Victor. Joe. Uh, what do you think Sam and Dean would be doing in this quarantine? Hmm. I think Sam would be reading, uh, eating salad, and uh, running on the treadmill, kind of like Jared. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like uh, I feel like Sam would be organizing the library, probably um, reading a lot of lore books, uh, sharpening his uh, mental acuity, and uh, and probably trying to be healthy. Maybe running around the bunker, um, doing what he can do. <clears throat> I think Dean would uh, would be on his way to full blown diabetes. <laughs> and uh, and probably under the hood of the car. Yeah, in the garage. Yeah, yeah. Just just a Super plate of, plate of bacon and and like brake fluid and grease. Yeah, fair enough. Bia Faria, um, if you could have any real life power from any supernatural character, 
What would it be and why? Brazil loves you. Obrigado. Obrigado. Uh, I know. I know what I would want. What? Um, this would be a double-edged sword because I would want to be able to do it, but then I would probably regret it shortly thereafter. No. No. What are you going to say? Shapeshift. You know okay. what I, mean? I thought you were going to say read people's minds. Oh no no that that I don't want to be able to do that. I don't want to know. Like, I don't want to know. Shape shifting is like a, a mid ground because if you kind of want to know what somebody thinks, if you could shape shift and they're like a confidant or a friend, you could kind of get a little insight without getting the brutal truth. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want anybody to be able to read my mind. Mm -mm. Um, they would just be confused and probably pass out. Uh, fly. I would in, a, heart, fly? in uh, a heartbeat. Fly. Like Michael and Lucifer? No, no, no. Like Superman? No, from Supernatural. Oh, is that what is that? Yeah, I mean Michael. I would be, what? Wait, nowhere. Uh, oh, any real life power from any supernatural character? Oh, I thought for some reason I was thinking uh, uh, superhero. Um, oh, supernatural character. Okay, then uh, time jump. Ooh, I'd want to be able to like. Go forward in time or backward in time? Yeah. Would you go forward in time? Uh, I don't know if I would. Yeah. 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 To see like where we're headed. That'd be so scary. And Maybe. then backward in time would be the whole butterfly effect thing. I read some funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Funny, don't touch anything. <laughs> I read some funny like uh, you know I don't know Instagram meme or something like that about like 2020 must be the year where somebody in the future has figured out how to go back in time because there have been so many things that keep on going wrong and then vanishing like the murder hornets like the murder hornets were going to kill everybody you know and then because so, somebody went back to like 1970 and swatted a fly or something uh and they morphed and then all of a sudden did they're gone see, did you see the did you see the the owl that flew into the patrol car and the no the, the cop crashed yeah it was like a giant barred owl what and, and there's like a picture of it in the front seat. And uh, who was it? I think it was Patton Oswalt. He wrote, oh, great. Now they've activated the owls. <laughs> oh, no, it was Andy Richter. It was Andy Richter tweeted. He was like, oh, great. Now they've activated the owls. <laughs> yeah, but I think going forward and backwards might be like a little bit of a uh, hi to Coda, everybody. So hi, buddy. Coda. Coda. Um, he, won't, he won't leave me alone. Um, yeah, this must be like the butterfly effect year. Uh, time jumping would be a lot of fun. We get there's a uh, the Starbucks that I go to uh, back home. They uh, I just go in and, and grab a coffee, but they've always got question of the days, like what the question of the day is, and it's you know it's always it's like would you jump out of a plane? Uh, would you or, kid, or like are you allowed to? Or or it's like what's your favorite time of year? Like what's your favorite season? Yeah. Uh, um, one of them was, uh, if you could travel to any decade, what would it be? Ooh. Yeah. Do and I, said, and I, I said, I said a future decade. Really? Yeah. What do you want? You want Neuralink or you want flying cars? Oh, we should definitely have flying cars by now. This is ridiculous. Come on, Elon. We yeah. all want to the future. Come on, Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Come on. We saw you with the skateboard. Uh, yeah, here's my hoverboard. It's 2020. I want my hoverboard. I don't know, man. I would think probably 60s. Yeah, I. You know what's funny is is it kind of it kind of called into and maybe this is just because of the the you know the the climate of of our society right now, but it yeah. it it called into like uh, where we were as a country, kind of on a social oh, aspect, awesome. and it's like and it's like hmm, and that's why I was like, sure, there'd be a lot of decades I'd like to go back to, but I certainly know that. Things weren't right back then. Yeah. So that's, I think that's why I said future, because hopefully we were doing it better than we've done it. Or there's just nothing. We all have guilt. It's just a barren wasteland, and it's like, oh, okay, let me go back to the present future and start selling everything I have. <laughs> this is where everybody who's logged into the Zoom is like, this is depressing. Wow. This just got, these guys are on lockdown for seven days. I'm crying now. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks for the question. All right. Um, Okay. Next. Anishka Rao. Anishka Rao? Anishka Rao. Rao. Is that Brazilian? How? Anishka Rao. Uh, what's your most memorable moment from Supernatural? 
Lots of love from India, Jared and Jensen. Lots of love back. Uh, so cool that people from all over the world are, are coming to visit. I don't yeah, feel so lonely uh, anymore. India, right on. Um, um, most memorable moment. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's hard. That's like asking what your most memorable moment of the last 15 years of your life has been. Uh, yeah, there have been quite a few. Yeah. Very, very memorable moments. I think if I were to think about, if I were to try and think about five, because a few come up, I remember shooting the last scene of the pilot. Uh, we got work to do, closing the trunk. Um, I remember, and this this didn't happen on camera, but I remember Phil Segresha, bringing him back up again, uh, during the filming of the 200th episode, he had all the actresses um, who were playing Sam and Dean and Bobby Singer perform Carry On, My Wayward Son for the cast and crew. So we just sat in the auditorium at this high school here in Vancouver and they performed it. I remember being so, like, chills everywhere. Like, I didn't know I had pores on my shoulder, but everything was just like goosebumps. Um, and that was pretty emotional. And again, back in season 10, we didn't know that we'd go much beyond 200. We hoped, but you know, you never know. So there have been, there have been little, more than a specific moment, there have been kind of like pit stops along the way. Um, obviously season four with Jen um, and season six, was it, with like French movie. I remember there have been certain times where I've almost felt like I'm on the outside looking in. Uh, I know filming that video with Misha announcing that 15 would be our, our 15th and final uh, was memorable. Um, you know, it was sad and it was, it felt, it felt, I felt, I felt very sad and very proud at the same time. I remember that scene with uh, Curtis as Metatron and Jensen as Dean. I'm proud of us. Cause that was another one of those moments where I was like, man, I, if, if this all ended, if the show doesn't get back, get picked back up, I am proud of us. Um, and so it seems like all of these moments, like that we got work to do in the pilot or, you know, seeing Carry On um, performed by a, a bunch of talented young actors uh, for our 200th episode or uh, acknowledging that we're about to be, you know, 15 and final have been moments where I was like, you know, I, I don't allow myself to be proud of myself very often. Um, I always feel like I have work to do. So maybe that's a combination of realizing I got, I got work to do. And Jeff and I sitting here in our apartments, we got work to do. Um, seven days of quarantine work before we get to do the fun work. Um, but also I am proud of us. So I think it's, it's been a, it's been a, a conglomeration of those moments. I spoke. There was a moment that happened uh, last year and it wasn't, it wasn't on the show, but it was certainly supernatural related. And that was uh, that I'll never forget. And that was uh, the last time we took the stage at Comic-Con. Oh God. Uh, walking out and seeing that crowd and knowing that that was going to be uh, the last time uh, for you know for this for this show uh, was was very very heavy. It was a, a, a weighty moment and it was a, a moment that I'll never forget. Just from a from a finality standpoint and also just from a um, you know look at what look, look at what we have all had a hand in creating. Um, that was, that was a pretty special, special moment. I, and I don't think we hit it well. <laughs> no, no, we did not. That was a difficult one. Yeah. The Comic-Con moments. Yeah. Good point. You know, the um, camp yeah. and the last one. Well, on that lovely uplifting moment, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that actually concludes our first ever virtual See, look at this. 15 years in, and we're still having firsts. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Uh, COVID can't stop Supernatural and the fandom. That's right. That. It can't, COVID, COVID can't kill this fandom. Not, yeah. not, not, even, not even a try. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's it. They're telling us to wrap it up. Uh, it's, it's see, while, though. One last question. Nope, that's it. That's the last question. Stop talking, Jared. Stop yeah. talking. Okay. That's now just you writing that. Now they're just yelling at us. So that's uh, okay. Um, 
wish we could see y'all's faces, but we can feel your presence. That's for sure. Um, welcome and hi from around the world. I'm trying to do the math in my head of what time it must be in Syria or India. Um, I think Brazil, you're in your evening right now. So thank you all for joining for everywhere. Um, we feel the love. And right now it's, uh, there are only two hearts beating inside of, uh, inside of my apartment. And one is my furry four legger. So, uh, it is a little lonesome, but, uh, I feel, I feel nice and warm knowing you guys are out there. So thank y'all. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the questions. Thanks for, uh, sticking with us. Uh, hope we hope you, you know, had a little entertainment during this, uh, this crazy wacky time that we're all in, but yeah. stay safe. We miss y'all. Can't wait to see your smiling faces without a mask on soon. Yeah. Jensen, Jared, on behalf of the entire Supernatural family, we're sending you lots of love, hugs, and well wishes as you embark on the last two episodes of this incredible show we've all come to love and, and spending your last uh, 15 years uh, with us. Okay, the tipping is now done, and we're going to bring you the results in just a few moments. But first, make sure you're signed up on our email list through our website, creationent.com, and follow us at CreationENT on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more announcements on virtual